Now, I'm not quite sure what happened last week, but I was using my mobile phone, hopefully, to capture some video, and I ended up only taking stills. That's why, up to this point, that's all you've seen of this new frame. But, as I mentioned in that previous segment with the stills, this top corner here is the problem, because the whole thing flexes. So what I'm going to do is put a piece in here, screw it through to this top batten here, and then screw through this into that new piece. So I'm just going to get that set up and then we'll carry on. So that's the piece of timber that I'm going to be using to support that top corner of the frame. But I need to attach this to the existing frame and the only way I'm going to be able to manage that, because it is three, three and a half inches wide, I'm going to have to use pocket holes. So to do that I have found the Craig pocket hole jig very, very good. Now, simple device that allows you to position where you want it and then drill two really good holes. It comes with its own drill that is designed to go into those holes. You can position the where it the holes appear on the target piece of wood and although it does come with screws specifically for the the screwdriver because it is the head is a square allen key really it does come with that but I tend to use ordinary screws uh, and I've found that perfectly acceptable. With these you can get deeper into the hole using this driver but uh, it, you don't have to use them and they're em open packet and there they go everywhere. So. That's the system that I'm using. Just pop these back in the envelope. And let's get set up. Now the whole idea of this is you pop it over the edge of the piece so the holes will appear somewhere here and head down toward this corner here. Depending on the thickness of the piece depends how far away from the edge you want to go. Now, because of where it's going, I'm going to be drilling into the underside of the, the timber. So if it's going to go like that, then I need to be drilling somewhere around here. So let me get the rule and this piece is 40 millimeters. So on the rear of the jig you have a scale um, from half an inch to one and a half inches. That's the thickness of the piece of timber. So. 40 millimeters is one and a half so that is going to extend almost to the end and you might not be able to see it but there are two arrows here that is where the settings are so one and a half inches so just to demonstrate 
that's where the jig appears and the holes will appear somewhere here so that they go sufficiently deep into the timber. Now then I will need the clamp just to hold everything down. Now the drill bit has a movable collar so just unloosen that or sorry loosen that and it's uh, a small he uh, hex screw grub screw that holds it together and on the inside of the case is with the drill against its stop there is again another series of hole uh, marks here indicating where this collar needs to be positioned so I'm on one and a half inches this is just so that as you drill into the hole that collar will act as a depth stop so tighten that up find somewhere to put it and an ordinary hex uh, fitting for the drill and then just drill away. That's that one, and just take that off, and you'll see that the holes are nice pocket holes about halfway through. Of course, they don't come through at this end, but they will allow the screws enough depth so that they get driven through properly because with the bottom of the hole about there if I use these included screws it's going to be about an inch inch and a half out the other side I'm going to stick with those I've got I've got enough I really I only need four holes so if that's the bottom so if I put another set of holes about here that will mean I can get there get at them fairly easy to easily to drive the screws home so that down and just pop that back in the case along with its allen key Okay, 
and there we go get a little closer so here the piece is firmly attached to this top bar and a couple of screws through this batten into that one and the whole thing is now rigid and that will take a pair of doors very nicely. Right, so I'm glad that the frame is actually square. I'm more surprised about that than anything I'm afraid uh, to say that it's been such a rough and ready production. But anyway, so the Uprights are 405 millimeters long. The overall length of the piece is 890. So I want to get put two doors in that. Now the difficulty is getting the plywood to face the doors. And I had thought one long piece, I've, some time ago I dismantled some old utility wardrobes and so I've got the, the plywood from all of the backing on that and I thought I can use a piece of that. But uh, one, uh, two pieces are only 400 millimetres wide long enough plenty long enough but only 400 wide and I need 405 and then I discovered this piece here so let me so this is actually three pieces that are really just glued together with strips and this is a piece that's been tacked on you can probably see, still see the pins from other pieces that I've taken off now measuring it up I can cut the two doors out of two of these pieces and that's going to make it a nice size but you get the idea I'm not going to keep that piece on although I'm I could I suppose um, because that would make something quite substantial for the the hinge I've got to locate where I put the hinges by the way and uh, nothing like being prepared is there but anyway two pieces I'm going to cut the doors to size and by just taking those off um, I think what I will do is just break that it's almost broken anyway so I'll just break those two pieces and then I can cut everything else down on the bandsaw. Well those came apart nice and easily. The big long strip that you saw down the side I thought that was tacked but no it wasn't it was only glued hence why it was only utility furniture. But anyway what I'm looking for now is 405 If I take that as the starting point, 405, that's the height.
square line. I'm assuming that that edge is square. So that's got the corners. So that's the height. 445 is the total length and I want a little bit of a gap so I'll make it 443. going to assume that that's square and that's that and this one would need to be 405 which should make this 443 close but not quite a cigar do the other one then I can cut them on the bandsaw. I have turned the speed down on the saw so that uh, it will not really chew up the very thin ply. Uh, both pieces marked up just cut. So two pieces of ply, they're not quite the same size, so what I'm going to do is just put them loosely into place and then I can make any needed adjustments. Right, they fit, it's not too bad a fit, so I'm pleased with that. Now, as I said, I'm just going to tack these onto a loose frame. And then I thought, what can I use? Well, going back quite a few years, when I had the timber machined um, to that odd size of 55 by 30 that I mentioned earlier in the video, some of the off cuts are about two and a half inches by six, 60 millimeters by about eight or ten and I thought I can use that. Thinking about it though that won't be thick enough for the to hold the hinges so my next thought from the wardrobe that I dismantled some time ago. Other bits of the frame. Now, this actually is mahogany. Not so peely as is available now. But this is the true mahogany. But they, they 
There we go, that's the rough position and all I'm going to do is screw them on with some 16mm number 4s and I've numbered all of the sides so I know which one's going where but because this is old wood that's the groove that the wardrobe used to have so I'm making that the outside and I've just got to make sure I remember which one's which. There we go. So as I say these aren't going to be attached to, to anything except the, the ply board because it doesn't need to do anything except add a little bit of rigidity and give me something to screw the hinges into. rough door and that's given it some weight some rigidity so that it won't flex in any direction right let me do the other one so I'm putting them about a hundred mil from the top edge and bottom edge and I had thought I will just leave them sticking proud but no on second thoughts I will inset them so thankfully I have nice sharp chisels thanks to my neighbour Tim he did me the great service a few months back of sharpening all of the chisels they were in a deplorable state so
going to do is just drill a pilot hole now this is slightly too big this is a two millimeter bit I think yes I could do with a one millimeter bit just to act as a pilot but um, I won't be going all the way down. I just want to start the hole off. And one of the big problems I have is that the screws I am using are, the screws that came with these brass hinges, they are brass screws but they do run the risk of shearing off that let's do the other one so there's the finished cupboard with the doors attached and I know there's a little gap in the middle my wife I did check with her she's happy with that and I'm, I could have filled it but no this is a rough and ready job it's getting something done and so we're going to leave it at that. The only things I've got left to do now is put a couple of little handles here so I can open them and down at this bottom edge I'm going to be putting a magnetic catch on the inside just to hold them shut because this one does have a tendency to fly open and I've just noticed down at this bottom edge it is flush but up, up at this top edge this, this corner is leaning out ever so slightly. Now that's down to the positioning of the hinges but again I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, and then um, so this afternoon all I'm going to do is drill the two holes for the handles. I'm not going to fit them now because I'm going to paint the whole lot and then that's the little project finished. <laughs> 